All right, so just as you're all working, I'm not going to stop you. I want you to keep going, but a lot of you are coming up with something and it is not one of the four options. Um, I always hated it when sometimes I was in a test and I was like, I spent 20 minutes on this question and the question was wrong. It has happened, right? This is not one of those questions. The answer really is one of these options. So given that a lot of you have found some answer, it's not one of these four, go back and have a look through your working. Um, it is just important for a mathematician to not just be able to get a right answer, but to back themselves out of a wrong answer because Real mathematicians get wrong answers all the time, and finding out where it's wrong is part of the challenge. So I send you back, i give you another two, three minutes. A lot of people haven't got anything yet, and that's fine. Call me over if you're absolutely at a dead end and don't even know what to try. Yeah, yeah. Who, who wants me to rescue them? Because <laughs> I'll give you more time if you want it. No, 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 no. <laughs> you're like, I don't need more time. I already know. OK, should we come back together for a minute? Pens down. Well, let's have a think about this together. Now, we started off this lesson by saying, oh yeah, this is so, so easy and so straightforward, right? I know about these things. And then the water gets real deep real fast, right? Admittedly, this question, it, it does all the things to make things difficult for you, right? Um, pretty much all, almost all the information that's needed is symbolic rather, I mean the only word that really matters is independent. It's because they don't have a symbol for independent. They would have used a symbol if they could. Secondly, there's no solution path suggested to you. When we were having a look in the morning, it even said, use a Venn diagram for this, right? Some of you have accurately deduced that a Venn diagram is really going to help. I will say though, as I wandered around, most of you forgot when you're constructing a Venn diagram, you do need a box around it. That's not just to make things neat. Why do we need a box around it? Because there's a whole sample space, right? These two things, let's call them A and B, aren't necessarily the entire universe. Things can happen outside of that. You can sometimes lose the lottery on a non-sunny day. That happens all the time, right? So therefore we have to include, and if you have not drawn a box around your Venn diagram, do it now. Um, even if you're not gonna do the thing, like even if there is nothing out here, you don't know that yet, right? You gotta start the diagram off in a helpful way. Now, I wanna address a question that a few of you I, I heard murmuring about, right? Which is, like I've drawn the two circles in my Venn diagram so they're overlapping. And some of you are saying, whoa, 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 hold up. It, independence doesn't mean they're like not to do with each other, like, like winning the lottery and sunny weather. Now, I turn back to you, and you should always do this, whenever you're like unsure about a, um, an abstract thing, go back to a concrete situation that you can use to help you. Use your intuition, right? These two we know, we've established, it's not controversial, that they're independent. Can they overlap? For them to overlap would be, I won the lottery, and at the same time, it's a sunny day. You better believe that's possible, right? Maybe it's not very often, especially if you're like, I don't know, on the Arctic Circle where the sun's hardly ever up or something like that. So it's like, I don't have any sunny days. That doesn't matter. They both can coexist, right? So that is why I've drawn this with an overlap because they can happen together. And nonetheless, even the question itself tells me there is an overlap between A and B. That's what that thing means, right? The intersection this middle area between A and B, and it says that's equal to P. Now, in fairness, the probabilities of some things can be zero, right? For sure, P can equal zero, which would mean that we have them separate. But guess what? If probability is equal to zero here, uh, I kind of captured that even by having overlapping circles and then saying P is equal to zero. That's like having non-overlapping circles. They would be effectively identical. So even if I meant to draw one of these, Having that and saying p equals zero is effectively saying this. So I'm actually okay, I'm pretty safe in this area, okay? All right, so here's my Venn diagram. I've already started by saying the intersection. And then I have to kind of untangle what's going on here, right? So not A, the complement of A. So now here's A, we're thinking outside of that, outside of this first circle. Intersection B. So I'm outside this circle, but I have to be inside where? B. This circle, the B circle, right? So inside here, but not in A. So that's this right-hand crescent looking thing, okay? So what's that? P take away one over eight. 
So far, so good. And probably from there, like this logic is the reverse, right? So you can say, well, that must be 3p over 5, whatever on earth that is, okay? My diagram is done, at least with all the information they've provided me, okay? Now, some of you got to this point, and you're like, what do I do next? Even though the real world is not like this, you can take advantage of the fact that when we pose your question in mathematics, we will hand you other information that is needed to solve. Sometimes in the real world, you just don't have the information you need, but we're asking if you to select a multiple choice. So we gave you all the options, right? A and B are independent. A and B are independent, which means that these are both true. These are two equations, and I could use either of them. I mean, they are kind of the same thing, but backwards, okay? So as I'm about to illustrate, you can use either of them interchangeably, but let's use the one that's over there written first, that the, I don't need these two disconnected circles, the probability of A given B is the same as the probability of A. Yeah? All right. Let's have a look at this. The probability of A, I'll start there because it's easier. You can read off the probability of A off of that Venn diagram, can't you? It's everything inside A. What's that equal to? It's 3P on 5 plus P. I know you can simplify that, but for now, let's just actually write where it comes from. That's the probability of A. Yeah? Now, this bad boy on the left hand side, this one we need to go back to this morning's lesson to think about because this is like, what's the definition of conditional probability? I'll give you a clue, it's got a fraction. Anyone want to help me out? Probability of A, if you know that B has happened. So what's happened to the sample space? It's reduced. How much has it reduced? What's it reduced to? It's reduced, oh sorry, where am I pointing? It's reduced to B, right? B is the thing that you know. So down the bottom, instead of having the entire sample space, we've only got the probability of B. Does that make sense? This is the only thing that can happen. What's up top? P of A and B. Now in set notation, what's our, what's our equivalent to and? That's intersection, right? And means they're both happening. Intersection B. Now, this is really great because I can work out both of these things. I mean, I don't even need to work out this thing, really. It's kind of handed to me. That's just equal to lowercase p, all divided by. Now, you've got to do the same thing over here that we did before, right? Here's b. So it's, yeah, 2p minus an eighth. That's just combining those. 2p minus an eighth. Uh, we might as well tidy up this right-hand side while we're at it. How would you combine those? 8p over 5, because this is 5p over 5, right? So yeah, I can, do, I can do equivalent fractions, happy times. Now at this point, we actually have broken the back of this task. I think you guys, we've turned a probability task into an algebra task. Like you just have to do some rearranging, right? Now I'm confident you guys can do that, but just for the sake of it, because there is one last little curveball left behind, uh, let's just go ahead and complete this together. Two fractions, I'm quite happy to cross multiply here. So on the left, I'm going to get 5p. What are you going to get on the right? Let's be careful. Say again. 16p squared. 16p squared. Just pause for a minute. It is awkward having a fraction on a fraction, but because that's an eighth and that's eight, that's quite nice actually, isn't it? So that's actually take away just p. Great. Uh, this is starting to look actually quite reasonable, right? Um, if I switch things, 16p squared, this would be take away p but I might as well subtract 5p from both sides. I know that's a bit sneaky because I'm switching sides and doing an operation at the same time, but I think you guys can handle this. Come on, we're in year 11. We've been doing algebra for ages, okay? What would you like to do to this? Okay, I can take out a factor of p. I can take out a factor of 2 as well. 2p gives me 8p minus 3. Now maybe at this point, at this point, you've gone far enough that you look over to your possible options Right? And you can see uh, the value of p is, well, there's two solutions to that. Are there not? Either this is 0 or this is? Okay, so you've got two answers. Now, hold on a second. Hold on a second. 0, 3 over 8. 
is this one of those sneaky ones? I told you the question wasn't broken, right? So you're like, which one is it? By the way, at uni, if you, any of you are um, uh, crazy slash brave enough to go and study any level of mathematics at uni, they love doing this to you. They give you multiple choice questions, five options, not four, because four is for you, know, you rookie people in high school. They give you five, and then they say, oh, by the way, one may be right, or two, or three, or four, or all five of them might be right, just to mess with you, right? Is this, are they both possible? Why not? Good, good. So this here, right? Don't just disregard it. We said that probability equals zero might just mean are they independent, sorry, not independent, mutually exclusive. But because of this thing over here, right? That's our problem. We know probabilities can't be negative. So that's why I can discard this. But I would say um, P cannot equal zero since the probability of B has to be greater than or equal to zero. Um, you know when you first learned Pythagoras' theorem in year eight, and you get to some line, you'd be like, C squared equals 25, and then you just say C equals five, right? But then we got to a point where we're like, whoa, 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 quadratic equation, two solutions, you gotta tell me why there isn't one. And this is sort of the same thing, right? In fact, it's because it's a quadratic, but you need to show why you can disregard an answer. Maybe in this case it's multiple choice, so the working's not as important, but there will be quiet times when, I mean, there's no reason why I couldn't pose this as a regular short response, and then this working is important. Ta-da, you got an answer.